So what, what we are doing is simply pushing forward everything a week. So, so it is not that the, 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 uh, the, the lecture I was supposed to give a week ago, I will give on the 10th. No, we're just pushing everything forward. So the lecture I was supposed to give a week ago, I give today. And the last lecture will not be uh, January 3rd, but will be January 10th. But you will still, but, but th that means that we have to find a, new, a place, a room for it. And that has not yet uh, succeeded. Uh, so you will hear as soon as possible um, when, we, uh, when we know. Um, okay, I'd like to talk today about a very, uh, a, a, a relatively small riot. Uh, but this riot is special because of the uh, the highly specific architectural nature of it and because the fact that it uh, has happened in, uh, well, in a, in, a, in a Western European country so that uh, in, in many ways it, uh, this is one of, uh, if, if, you, if you look at riots in the, in the United States you could still think, well, uh, that could never happen to us but uh, with, uh, oops I, am I still online? <laughs> yeah? With this ri riot that happened in uh, North London, it is already getting closer to home, which uh, should be interesting to us. Now, um, I'll just go... And again, in this story, there will be uh, uh, there's a, a strong um, resonance or a strong presence of um, you could say uh, cultural phenomena or po popular cultural phenomena that play a, a huge role in this story. And uh, but in this 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 riot itself is so small that that it makes it possible for us to look at it nearly on an architectural scale and not so much on a purely urban uh, political scale like we did uh, last week or two, two weeks ago. Anyway, these, the, we are talking about the Broadwater Farm uh, riots in early October 1985. Broadwater Farm was not a farm but a, a, a high-rise uh, uh, housing estate from the middle 60s in the middle of a kind of middle, lower middle class Victorian suburb in Tottenham uh, uh, in North London. And there, yeah, there you can see it. Uh, there's a huge uh, uh, sports f recreation field and here you can see the system of slabs, uh, high rise slabs, uh, uh, social housing. Here you can see the, uh, the, the layout of the, of the area. It all started out with uh, this, er this, uh, this housing estate uh, was um, at that time in the, in the, in the middle 80s, it was, it was very criminal, there, it was very poor, an enormous amount of unemployed and it was more than 50% uh, um, used, lived in by immigrants and namely from uh, the West Indies, meaning Jamaica, Guyana, etc. So it was uh, lived in by, uh, uh, by, Car by Caribbean immigrants. There was a lot of drugs de drug dealing going on and that was actually one of the things that started it. There was a, a drugs deal going on on the street then uh, there was also some ar arms dealing going on. Um, the police w went after uh, a dealer, visited him at his home. His home uh, being his, his mother's home, being two kilometers away from the estate. Uh, they, they raid the house in, in a quite brutal way. They, they break into the house. They, they want to uh, arrest uh, the son of this uh, middle-aged woman. Uh, I, I don't even know if the son was at home. And during that, that 
that chaotic situation of this arrest, the woman, Cynthia Jarrett, collapses and dies. It is still to this day unclear if this happened just because of the shock that she had a heart attack or that she was in some, some way uh, abused, uh, that she was molested, that she was uh, thrown around, hit or uh, otherwise, uh, that the police had behaved in an unlawful way or not. Um, the day after, there's uh, a, a gang of youths uh, go, to the pol go to the local police station, which is again outside of the, uh, the, the, um, the housing estate, and they start protesting against the police. There are some rocks being thrown. Uh, also inside the, uh, very near the, uh, very near the estate. This is a, this is a, <laughs> a diagram that shows uh, the distance uh, between the, the, fa the, the original trigger event, the, the collapse of the, of the woman. This is the house where she lives, this is her. This is the, uh, the protest against the police. Uh, and this is where this model, I'll tell you more about this model later, this is where the, uh, the riot started happening in the estate. Uh, the youths, they start uh, after the, the uh, it, it becomes clear that the woman has died after the, the protests at the police station. Uh, the, somehow the housing estate, which has always been, been uh, a kind of um, icon or a kind of citadel, you could say, of, of, uh, of, of the black youths who, who see it as their territory, they start going to, uh, they, so other youths from other parts of the, of the area go towards uh, this housing estate. The youths that, that live inside the housing, housing estate, they start ganging up, the uh, they start uh, uh, putting cars on fire, start throwing stones at shops around it, the police ca come in and a huge, huge uh, fight uh, evolves. And the interesting thing is, you can see that here, that then immediately, that's why I also use this word citadel, this, um, you can see where the main rioting area uh, develops. The main rioting area develops in between, in, in a kind of strange amorphous zone, in between this 60s uh, modernist housing complex, that has uh, elevated walkways, that is on a huge scale, very uh, built uh, by uh, prefab systems, etc. And then there is this area in, th in the midst of which it has been built, which is a low-rise terraced housing from the late 19th century. So you can see these two forms of city not really fitting well, because there is this kind of broad and uh, I and unclear uh, zone, basically consisting of grass where dogs shit and some parking spaces and some, some, some strange uh, empty, empty zones where nobody really goes. It is exactly this zone uh, that develops into a kind of uh, riot zone. This is the zone where the police push forward, push the, uh, the rioting youths back into. Why is this light going on? <laughs> Lighting. System, oh no, I'd better not do. There. <gasps> it's, yeah, I, I should not move while I talk. Okay, I'll try not to. Uh, so, so we're, we're, and the, the youths, they want to go outward and they want to start rioting and they want to burn cars and, and, and throw stones through shop windows and the police want to push them back into their box, back into their citadel, back into their cage, you could say. So it is extremely interesting on, a, on an urban, uh, on an architectural level even, uh, that this is exactly the zone uh, where uh, the rioting takes place. It is also a conscious choice of the riot police to not enter into this uh, zone. Because why? Be uh, why do they not want to enter into this zone? You could say that why don't they just sweep through it and 
and uh, chase everyone out or back into their houses or arrest them. The reason is that for the police, uh, Br uh, Broadwater Farm, uh, the name of the estate, is uh, a kind of no-go zone. And why is it a no-go zone? Because once they're inside, they don't know what to do anymore. Because of the, the spatial nature of this place, they have no idea how to uh, chase the criminals. Because there are elevated walkways, there are little stairs that connect them, there are these huge stairwells that that where, where the different uh, elevated walkways comes, come together. There are, uh, underground, there's a huge underground zone that is completely un unmonitored, which consists of parking places and with little stairs that go up to the elevated house. So it's an incredible nest, a, a kind of network, uh, uh, one of those typical modernist, uh, multi-level uh, network uh, city, uh, city uh, constructions that make it extremely difficult for the police to exert any control over it and it makes the police extremely vulnerable for attacks from behind, underneath, from the, from the top. They are either being attacked from underneath by youths that just pop up from, from under the, the, the elevated walkway or rocks get, get thrown at them from the, uh, from the, ga from the uh, public galleries on the sick, etc. So the police makes a choice not to go in there and just push the, these uh, black uh, youths back into their area. So here you can see this uh, standing around it, push, it's like a siege, pushing them back in. And this is a, an image of this uh, in-between zone at the present day. So this is where the this is, this is the front line of the fighting. And then what happens, because the youths of, of Broadwater Farm, they are completely aware of this. It is their area, they own it, they know it by heart. It is their, that, that is the reason that it, this is the place where they can make their drug deals, where they can uh, 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 terrorize uh, everybody where, where they, it, but also it is the place where the police cannot touch them. Once they are out of it, even if they are innocent and not doing anything, out of this area the police would be harassing them, arresting them, questioning them, pulling them over, etc. Inside uh, the police hardly ever came because it is a no-go zone for the police. And the, and the, the, you, and so, so what happens is, they are not finished with fighting the police. They do not accept this, this outcome that they are just being pulled ba pushed back. So what they do is they start some fires in the area, forcing the uh, ambulances and the fire brigades to go into the area, followed by the police who have to protect them. So they pull, uh, so they start, fi fires ha are started, the police comes in, followed by the police, straight into the area, and the main fire starts right inside this uh, kind of ziggurat-like block, the Tangmir block uh, in the middle, where you also, inside the block, have this system of elevated highways, and there um, uh, the police come in. The r in, in the meantime, the the police is not in England, the police has not had a lot of, well they had had a lot of uh, riots, but I'll talk about that later, but the police was not as equipped as, for example, the American police would be by just bringing in the army and rolling in tanks and basically shooting everyone. Uh, here, you have to d here you have to imagine it is some riot police, which was a relatively small force, and then there is the bobbies, and the bobbies, of course, are are just, they're, they are tough guys, uh, despite the way they look, but they just have, have uh, sticks and, and a helmet and, and some small shields, that's all they had. So the police here uh, is not on the scale of the police that you could imagine uh, in, in the United States. So anyway, the, the riot goes on and on, it gets drawn inside. Here you can see some images. 
some of the fights going on. This is still around and outside.